Harrisville, New Hampshire with Chick. And are you the owner of Harrisville Designs? It owns me, yeah. Okay, so tell me everything. How did you get to be the owner of such an epic fiber destination? Well, it was almost 50 years ago. Uh, I started Harrisville Designs with the sole purpose of trying to keep textile production here in this village mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. Because the mill that was here uh, closed in 1970 and textiles appeared to be over. Mm -hmm. So those of us working on the preservation of the village found ourselves preserving a textile village in which there probably wouldn't be any more textiles. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'll start a woolen mill. And so how, how do you even start that? I mean, and it must have, it's changed a lot in 50 years. So how do you start one 50 years ago? Well, it, it, it hasn't, it, we're in the context of this village and the preservation of the village is that it doesn't change much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're constrained by being here mm -hmm. in some ways. I mean, we couldn't grow indefinitely because we'd be out growing the place. Right. Uh, but anyway, uh, we started it, I mean, I grew up in the textile industry. My family ran the mill that was here. My mm -hmm. father and his brother ran it until they ran out of steam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was in the military at the time. I never actually worked there officially. I mean, it's summers I worked there. And uh, they were trying to, you know, wind down the business. And out of the wreckage of that business, I, I bought some of their equipment and put it to work. You're a very young man to feel that sense of wanting to preserve something. So that's unique. Yeah, yeah, I was lucky. Uh, I mean, I grew up here and we never thought much about it. I mean, we knew it was a beautiful place, but we didn't get into preservation. But when I was in the military service, I was stationed in New Orleans and uh, well, I was there, uh, they were, I watched them tear down, I lived in the French Quarter and I watched them tear down four, 14 blocks of the French Quarter to build a Marriott. So people could come and see the French Quarter which they had torn down to build the Marriott. Mm -hmm. It didn't make any sense to me and I just thought it was absurd. And that's when I really started to worry about the resources and how they were being treated and where they were all going. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that got me interested and when I came back from the military to help resolve the situation here, uh, I decided to try something different. Now, did you have any connection to sheep at all? No. So it was just about this town, and, and it's such a beautiful American it, iconic I, town. It's a National Historic Landmark because it's well, so well preserved. Mm -hmm. uh, there were many towns like this at one time. Uh, they didn't survive because as the industry ran down, the towns ran down with it. You notice a lot of the textile museums, that's exactly the story. They shut down and then that's all that's left is... Well, the mills were originally built were more than just mills. They also built boarding houses and tenements to try to encourage people to come and work there. After the Civil War, they no longer had to house anybody because there, was enough, there were enough people around uh, to work. So uh, the mill owners got rid of all their housing and just ran their mills. And as the mills, as I said, as the industry wound down, then the towns went wound down too. Do you still have a boarding house? I feel like you do here. There are two boarding houses still standing. That are part of Harrisville? Yes. And One is a three, three apartments. The other is a mixed use daycare office space mm -hmm. dormitory. And so how has it changed in 50 years? Because you, this has been your life's work. Uh, well, uh, many of the buildings were uh, kind of used as warehouses and very lightly used. Mm -hmm. And we figured out that the only way to preserve the buildings here because no one had any money. Uh, the only way to preserve the buildings was to use them. Mm -hmm. And so we invested small amounts of money, put them to use, rented them out, and it's the rental income that provides their, their upkeep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that idea of recycling buildings is pretty obvious now, but in 1971 was not very obvious. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have... We weren't brilliant, we were desperate. <laughs> do you have children that are in the business now? Yes. So it still remains in the family? Yes. And will going forward? We hope so. Do you have knitters in your family? Yes. Do you knit? No. I can knit, but I don't consider myself a knitter. What's the best thing about what you've built in the past 50 years? Uh, the best thing is getting to know so many people and dealing with them on their creative side. Mm. You know, we're not trying to sell them something they don't really want, mm -hmm. something they really love. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, making something that's inspirational for, the, for people's creativity is very, very interesting. I think people need to be creative. And the, the nice thing about crafts is that you don't have to, you don't have to be an artist to, to be creative. You can just be a crafts person and 
and it's a good outlet for a lot of people. Everyone can be creative, right? I believe so. Now, everyone should be. What is what has been the most challenging part of this path you chose? Well, most most challenging. <laughs> it was a terrible business idea because it doesn't make any money. And I started, I'm sure, in 1970, 54 mills in New England closed. And I think I started in 1971, the only woolen mill that was ever started in the country in 1971. It was running against the trend. Right. Um, and it's been difficult uh, to hold it together and, and because it, you know, we, we had to make enough money to survive. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, the difficult part going forward is, is the, is that to make yarn you have to have trained people mm -hmm. and there used to be mills all around this area in new, textiles was the biggest industry in new hampshire up until 1965. so everybody ha had had experience in woolen mills but now not so much yeah and we have to train people from scratch and it's hard work and it's it's difficult work but people like it luckily mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's still a lot of people around here who have a good work ethic uh, we really are nice to our employees. Hope they stay as long as they can. Yeah. Because it's not easy going forward. I understand that the mill is not running today, so I can't visit it. But tell me about the equipment. Right. The equipment, most of it is ancient. Yeah. Because as the industry was collapsing, there wasn't any point in making new equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, the cards, which are the heart of the spinning business, uh, were built in 1924 in Massachusetts. They've wow. never been anywhere but in Harrisville. Wow. And they're almost a hundred years old. It's kind of embarrassing in a way, but they work yeah. fine. Do you have the big leather belts? And yeah, we have to repair all belts and chains and clothing and everything else. It's is that also challenging to find people who can repair? It is. Repair? Very, very. You have to find people who are clever. And it's, yeah. it's an art. It's not just turning a wrench. It's, you really know how to do it. Yeah. And getting parts is extremely difficult now. Yeah. Because there is no industry left. Yeah. So tell me more about Harrisville. What else? This I, is a reason I, to come, but what else? I tried to scale the spinning mill to be as small as I think a spinning mill can be mm. and still be real. Mm. We didn't want to set up a demonstration thing, a kind of a tourist attraction. Mm. But we didn't want it to be a big business either because there's no big business out there. Mm -hmm. So we wanted it to be small, fit in the village, be meaningful and be real. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I think it's done that. And are there other businesses that you have grown up with in the past 50 years that are here in Harrisville? Yeah, there are a lot of other, uh, historic Harrisville owns this building. We rent it from them. They own many of the buildings in town and they have about 45 different tenants. Oh, that's amazing. Some are residential, mm -hmm. but people making custom motorcycles, architect's office, photographs, photographer's office, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Well, thank you for spending a few mo That's right. minutes with me today. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to get on my feet with some of your gals, and they're going to show me all of the ins and outs, because I know that you spin for several companies. Like, you, we do. Can you yep. mention some of them? Or? Uh, sure. We started out uh, ne not being able to make as much yarn as we... We couldn't sell as much yarn as we could make. Right. So we rented out our capacity to other people. Mm -hmm. And we've always tried to do it only with people who are using 100% wool or animal fiber mm -hmm. and also high quality because commercial spinning has always been a difficult thing because the the, the, the quality of the wool can run down mm -hmm. and they expect the yarn to stay the same mm -hmm. but the yarn comes from the wool mm -hmm. and uh, so we need customers who understand that can buy really decent wool and, um, and we've had good luck over the years one of our major customers was originally was a company called Christopher Sheep Farm in Maine. <clears throat> a fellow had a farm, raised his own sheep, made his own yarn, grew that business quite a bit, started buying wool from other farmers in Maine. We made the yarn for him. And another company in Maine called Peace Fleece, where mm -hmm. they brought wool in from Russia and blended it with wool from Maine mm -hmm. and, and made a kind of a, a political gesture, kind of a yarn where it was joining, it was a farmer to farmer uh, attempt and uh, th th that company has flourished and uh, when the people who ran it decided to retire a few years ago we bought that company from them oh I mean, we were already making all the yarn oh i didn't realize and you guys we, owned? and we purchased pieces oh great okay cool about three years ago yeah i have knit with that wool and i actually am about 80 percent done with a sweater with harrisville oh great hot pink <laughs> and it's been so great to work with yeah. so i was glad that I'm knitting on it right now. I actually knit on it the entire way here. So 
I'm we, really feeling the Harrisville vibes. We started out making just yarn for weaving, mm -hmm. but many knitters wanted to use our yarn because they like the colors. Mm -hmm. Because we make heather colors. We dye the wool first and blend the colors. Mm -hmm. And so over the years, we've softened the yarn up by using finer wool mm -hmm. to give it a better hand. It's hard to make a yarn that's good for knitting and good for weaving. Right. But that's what we try to do. Well, thank you so much for your time, Chick. Okay. And let's get on our feet and see the rest of the building. <laughs> okay. Great. I was just sitting in the classroom space of Harrisville Designs during my interview with Chick. So I just wanted to show you the room before we go downstairs to the retail store. You can see there's plenty of room here, complete with whiteboard and beautiful natural light and all of the resources there in the back and get a load of these floors. I mean, come on, so good. Here is the nightshades and I love that you can really see the subtle difference in each hue. See the green in that one? This is the yellow. This is the red and the orange. It's so cool. Did you see this cool loom? What loom? This weaving loom. How do you work it? I don't know, it looks so cool, huh? Maybe he knows. Let's watch him do it. Squish. What happens next? Squish it down. Wow. That looks complicated. Don't be scared. <gasps> hey, ladies. It's Sasha and Anne Marie. You guys work here, right? Yes. Like full time? Full time. So what does that look like for you? At, like come in every single day and help the customers? And Yes, Tuesday through Saturday, nine to five. And do you guys teach here also? I help with knitting. And, and we're just learning to do some wonderful teaching and she runs our study hall. So actually what's happening study on. hall, yes. love that. Study hall. And so that's just part of the business. Oh look, Jason's photobombing us. Hey, honey. So, do you guys want to give me a little tour of the space? Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, let's start so from the start beginning. When you yeah. Come in the door. Yeah, love that. So, you walk in, and we start with the hydro line. Ooh, what's hydro line? Um, That's this? Chick Sign Nick designed this line um, with three different ways bulky, um, worsted, and fingering. And why is it called hydro? Hydro, because they use the money to start the turbine again. Oh, here in the town. In the town. We right just at the end. we just finished the interview with Chick, and he's, you know, basically his whole life's mission is to preserve this town. That's a textile village. Yeah, and so we have to have the water, otherwise, how can we have the textiles, right? Right. Okay, yeah. cool. So All the right. Water um, flows under the store, mm -hmm. and it goes under Noragon Studios next door. Oh, Noragon's next door. Yeah. Oh, I should yeah. go say hi to her. I wonder I if she's there. I think she left already. I don't know if yeah. she's here. But right. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And so then um, we see our nightshades. This came out yes. last year, right before mm -hmm. Rhinebeck. They do, did very well at Rhinebeck. Yes, people were so excited. Yeah. I actually ordered mine the week after because I couldn't buy it at yeah. the festival. It's gorgeous. Sasha had to bring us more to Rhinebeck yes, last year. Right? You did? Yes, I filled my husband's Honda Civic like literally to the roof. I'm like, how many boxes do you think you can bring? And I was like, I think six. And then I was like, maybe if I take it out of the box and mm. stuff it in the corner of the trunk. So you brought an emergency. Yes. An yep. emergency she told them you're going to sell out by lunchtime. She was right. Amazing. So this year we're hoping we bring more. Okay, more. So it's like a black rainbow. You can totally see it. Very cool. Okay, this is a brand new collection that launched yesterday. <gasps> yesterday? Whitney Hayward. Okay. And uh, we're really happy to have her. She's our in-house designer. She's based in Arkansas. Yeah, so she's the director for all of the pattern design program with Nance, and we're so lucky. So you have a whole program because you have to have the patterns to support the yarn, right? Yes. Isn't that part of the business? And she has them tested and go to a great ticket. Yeah. These are beautiful. I'm going to cast on tomorrow. That's calling you. A launch lunch. Launch lunch. I love that. Yeah. Launch lunch. Yeah, so if anybody wants to cast on tomorrow, we're hoping they're going to come and pick their patterns and 
see what yarns they want to use. But it's really been a lot of fun to have new patterns because it's been a little while and it's just exciting to see a sort of more modern. Yeah, I got the coach. email and I thought yeah. that the photographs and everything were just really beautiful and. They went out on a will buy at the Navajo Reservation and they used a model out there. Yeah, Amazing. one of the women who, and she is actually a weaver. Naomi Glass. Naomi Glass. Naomi is, Glass. Is a, incredible weaver and she's Navajo and she also does modeling. So. And this is her? This is her. Well actually she is, there's a few models this is, right? This is, oh there yeah, she is. So this is Naomi. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. She's on Instagram today and skateboarding. Yeah. Love it. Cool. Love it. She's pretty cool. <laughs> and I learned from Chick that you that Harrisville bought Peace Fleece, which I didn't know. Yes. Yeah. So this is all the Peace Fleece. This is all the Peace Fleece. I love Peace Fleece. You guys like knitting with Peace Fleece? We do. It's like a heavy western. Yeah. We have more sweaters coming out soon. Yeah. So Peace I, Fleece was Fleece. my first big project I ever it did. It was? It was a baby blanket for my dog. And I still have it and it still looks perfect. Yeah. It's such, it's, it's like, sturdy, yes. It's soft. It's just gorgeous. I love just the adventure of looking at it because it has all of these little flecks in it. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Really cool. Okay. So we have a, a worsted, heavy worsted, like four stitches to the inch of a DK. Begging for more colors. More, more colors. Yeah. More colors. Yes. And are these some local artists local that artists have here? Yes. goods? Yeah. Very so nice. This potter actually has her studio right in one of the mill buildings. Her name is Kat O'Brien. And she does all of the, the brush work by hand and she's learning how to do throwing and then this is another potter beautiful who's from uh, Hancock yeah and we have an amazing wood carver here in town and his name is uh, Phil Gargan and he does Z spoons amazing and he's originally from South Africa actually but lives here in Hancock cool. and he also is the person who does uh, He's our Harrisville Uber. Uber guy. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, he's awesome. So he goes and picks people up and brings them. That's so great. And are these looms for our, just anyone to try? Anyone to try. They can come oh. do a weaver project also, do a scarf or a shawl. Wow. Interested to get classics, yeah. I know. Oh, nice. So you just have to love having kids kids. Yeah. Yeah. to sit and read. Yeah. It's really kind of magic. You don't get to make it's, things. Yeah. It's fun, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Testimonial. What is like the price range on one of these? <laughs> well, if you can find one that somebody's selling, sometimes you can get a pretty good deal. You, you have to go to a brand new one. One. Yeah. It's more like in the thousand, fifteen hundred, seventeen hundred range. You have to go to an auction. I've seen a lot of these at auction. At, like at Maryland nice. Sheep and Wall, yeah. stuff oh, like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's pretty smart. But we yeah. make all the parts, so we build these looms here in Harrisville. So if you find one, you can uh, get it all fixed up. And so I can find like a partially constructed Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Like weaving corner, section. got it. Yep. All the yarn here is on cones. So yeah. Two different weights, so Which is easier. washed. Yeah, for weaving. And then this section. Oh, yeah. Worcestered Highland and Shetland. Okay. Um, used great for color work. Mm -hmm. I just. 64 different colors. I was going to say, I'm really struck by how bright it is. Because a lot of the sort of more farmier, rustic yarns, they don't come in such a wide range of colors. So I'm really drawn to this line, and I find it really affordable too. It's really affordable. Mm -hmm. it's, it will last a lot longer. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's very traditional, grippy, good for color work. Yeah, love it. Okay, we have a little, oh, have a little spin, spin cycle. cycle we love to mix spin cycle in with our yarn for color work. Yeah, gorgeous. I haven't seen this one. That's so cool. Heart sigh. <gasps> Okay, what else? What's this stitching story? I haven't seen this before. What's this? So these are kits, actually. They're um, from England. Mm. And we love having people come in and do, you know, more complicated patterns, but you have to start someplace. Mm -hmm. And so we do have a lot of folks who come in and want to make something for their grandchild, or they want to learn to knit, and they're just getting back into it. So this is just kind of a, a gift item, really. Yeah. Um, but we really love their love their colors and their yarn is beautiful as well. So cute. Back okay, here you missed our What did I miss? This is a rug loom. <gasps> oh my goodness. Yes, we also build rug looms here. All by hand. And does, I mean, how long has this been here? Will people purchase this? Yes. This is an item to purchase. Yes, this is an item to purchase. And we actually have had a few people, they're building one now that's 72 inches wide. Oh my For somebody goodness. who is, she's a professional weaver and she's going to be teaching 
And so she came and visited and she tried it out for the weekend. But um, for tapestry weaving, if you want to be able to do rugs that mm -hmm. have a lot of pattern in them, yeah. this is a really unique loom. <gasps> it has a shaft switching device, which means that basically these little tabs, mm -hmm. if you move them, it changes the pattern. <gasps> and that makes it incredibly wonderful for doing tapestry on a rug loom. So Rebecca Massot, for instance, who does a ton of tapestry work, loves her Harris Hill loom and is always telling people. This is like a piano. It's, yes. You know, it's music. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That's so cool. And so Jason, Jason Collingwood's father, Jason Collingwood is a wonderful rug weaving teacher and a rug weaver, but his father, Peter Collingwood designed this loom with Chick Colony and Chick's father, John, I think maybe helped a little bit too, to be like the ultimate rug, rug loom. And it, love that. It looks ultimate. And it's mahogany and <gasps> very, very good. Part, partly mahogany, not all I love it. That look. So cool. All right, what else? What else do we, we have? We have a fleece back here. Oh, yeah. Christmas colors and um, oh. Highland Shadow colors. People use this for felting. And they don't, so they don't spin it. This is just for no, felting. No, short staples. So okay, we'll, short. We have staples. a lot of people that do um, wet felting, needle felting. Yeah. So this is the piece fleece. I can see it. You I can, can see, see it. The yeah. Yeah. The, the flex. That is yeah, so, so cool. The Harris Hill designs is always on a roll. Mm -hmm. and the piece fleece is always in a ball. Mmm. That's how we know the difference. Yep. Cool. Yeah, and it feels different too because it's a different breed of sheep. Mm -hmm. This is Rambouillet. And that's like a merino suffix cross, right? Yes. And do people buy this by the pound or what? Yeah, so yes. that is just our, some fine merino from the mill. And I yeah. said I wanted to have some so people which people do want to spin with it. And that's yeah. actually from a local farm. That's Coopworth uh, that was shorn from her rams, she said. And so it's just fun to be able to have all the different textures. Totally. Remember this? Remember pot holders? Oh, uh, friendly loom pot holders are really a staple too. Right? So Look at I love them. Look this at how is beautiful the this pie. is. Mixed berry pie patterns. I never even knew as a kid I could make it look good. Yeah. You can do some really amazing stuff and we have many, many more adults honestly who come in with really? pot holders. People love it. We have a few um, truck drivers and people who come in oh, and buy yeah. giant People of all bags. ages. <laughs> Gentlemen love these things. I love it. Adults. More adults than kids. And that's why, look at all of the colors. I mean, you and guys it can... It comes in two different sizes. <gasps> traditional and pro. That is, and pro? Yeah, pro is I a love larger. that. It's a larger. Oh yeah, I see it. Pot holder pro. I see it right here. And pot holder loom. It's bringing me back, you guys. Memories yeah. bringing me back. Kids, kids. So kids. good. It's like anyone can just come here, the whole family, and find their find project. Yeah, they can sit and make a pot holder. Yeah. We love having families come in. Like, yeah. I'm this sure. This was a group of cousins who yeah. just came in. And one of them started, and then the next one yeah. thought that looked like fun. Drop spindles. Drop yeah. spindles, yeah, we carry Ashford product. And the, well, in our drop spindles, we make the drop spindles. I mean, we have a whole wood oh, shop wow. in this building down here with a flat roof. Okay. okay. Oh, okay, yes. So that is where our loom shop is. We build all the floor looms. We build all the peg looms. The all of this. Spindles, the floor looms are all made right here in Harrisville. So amazing. Okay, keep going. <gasps> Brooklyn the Tweed. Tweed is one of our main customers. And don't you guys spin Brooklyn? We spin Brooklyn Tweed. Because I feel like their label's lot. like, it starts in Wyoming, then it goes to New Hampshire, then it goes, like it goes all these yeah. places, right? Yeah, Johnson yeah. County, Wyoming. Yeah. Harrisville, New Hampshire, we are. Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's and then, great. So and then Nora was kind enough also to let us borrow some of her beautiful mm. things that she has mm -hmm. made. She's on the Brooklyn Tweed design team. Mm -hmm. So we're just so lucky because we get to, yeah. get to have her visit. Love it. And do you carry the whole line of Brooklyn Tweed? Yes. Everything's here. Yeah. So we have all their, yeah, we have all their yards. Yeah. Yep, we have all the Peary, all the colors. The, the books I see. Yep. The Arbor, the new colors. The I still haven't, oh, I haven't even um, knit with Arbor or Veil yet. Oh, it's beautiful. Is it so this is a, I think this is the, uh, 
This is Arbor. This is one of Nora's designs. It's just She's incredible. so talented. She is. Look at your huge checkout. So good. And this is the study hall. And I showed a little. Um, I showed a little view of the classroom upstairs. It's so big. What do you guys do for retreats and stuff? Don't you have retreats and things? Or we, overnight? For, yeah, so we have a boarding house across the street. Mm -hmm. And I can show you that if you want. If you want to take a, you know, we can do a little walking tour down there. Okay. Do you want to do that? Yeah, we could. Yeah, absolutely. So this is Nora's. Oh, this is where Nora? Oh, cool. So she's so close to you guys. Yeah. Nora? <laughs> Harrisville. So she just walks over and gets her yarn yeah, if she runs she out. And she's running short. We usually have some, some of the right color, hopefully the right dye lot. How picturesque. What's the general store like up there? Like, what would so I the find? The general store is fantastic. It's really like gourmet food, um, prepared food, any little staples you might need. And they also have beautiful gifts, and they have, I mean, it's really much more than just your traditional general mm -hmm. store, I would say. And it is um, Historic Harrisville owns the building that the, that the general store is in, mm -hmm. and that really enables them to just have. A, a much easier time being able to stay because it's very up and down here. Mm -hmm. you know, in the winter time, it can be very slow. It's really you can see over here, there's a little boat floating around in the canal right now, and they are using that probably just to check on some of the mechanics of the mill because they really do raise and lower the water and use that to be able to control the water level and all the ponds. Mm -hmm. And it goes down through here, and that's where the turbine is. It's on the other side. Oh, and that's mill. that's what the water is, or the yarn hydro line. line. Yeah, yeah hydro the line. hydro line helps support that. So it sounds like the town itself has like a business, and they incorporated so that they could control all these buildings and well, sort of preserve them. It was originally. I mean, them. it originally was Cheshire Mills, and mm -hmm. all of the buildings were owned by the Colony family at that point, but. When Cheshire Mills closed, things really shifted and really changed. And yeah. Historic Harrisville was formed with the goal that these beautiful buildings would be able to be preserved, but also that it would be a real town. You know, Chick yeah. never had, and the incorporators for Historic Harrisville wanted it to be, this, they wanted it to remain Harrisville and yeah. have the people who live here be able to live here and work here and not be dressed up in, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I'm not wearing a wool, a wool petticoat and a full skirt and having to demonstrate spinning. Yeah, this is actually real 2019. Absolutely. Yeah. Look at these puppy and yeah. cat. Look at these friends. Oh, yeah. They're, they're so <laughs> funny. Hi, guys. That's yeah. not a sight you see every day. So we're going to go in the super sneaky back way. Okay. <laughs> oh, look, he's getting all. Oh, hey. Aww. Hey. Aww. Hey. So, like, all these little buildings. Yeah. Here yeah. Are, are, this is called Kadakit Street. Uh huh. And so this all would have been company housing. Oh. And then there's another little row of white buildings back behind called Peanut Row that are like these four little tiny houses that all look the same. And again, all of that would have been housing for people who worked at Cheshire Mills. And mm -hmm. now it's housing or places where people live who work at Harrisville Designs or Historic Harrisville or the yeah. store. Or, these are all artist studios up here on the third floor. Oh, great. And there's a great, in October, there's like a wonderful open studio thing. So that's really fun. Mm -hmm. You can go and see what's going on. So just to orient us, this is going to be, what's, so artist studios and what else is in this building? So this building actually has all of our yarn finishing. Okay. So like this is where we wash all the yarn, the skeining, um, the labeling, the packing, the shipping, and also the, uh, all the Friendly Loom products get shipped from this building as well. And then that building right here, we didn't go in there. Nope, so this building actually is artist space, uh, Kat O'Brien, whose pottery we saw. Okay. So that's her studio in the upstairs. Okay. And then the, the lower floor has a wonderful leather manufacturing company called Bass Adder. Cool. So Kate works there part-time and at the Harrisville Design Store part-time. Hi, kitties. Hi. You guys coming to say hello? Oh, they're friendly. Yeah. Hi. You coming to say hi? Hello. Online. This is our future yeah. sweaters. <laughs> future sweaters right yeah. there. So this is 
I smell boxes. All just in their house space. Yeah, okay. Wow, this is, look how much it takes. This is where my yarn came, was shipped from. Oh, and this is the wood. Yep, so this mm, is the part. Shop. Oh, cool. Of the looms. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. So here's a rug loom being built. Yep, there it is. And so they, they make, they actually put the rug looms together completely here before they ship them. Amazing. Wow. There's a lot of yarn. <gasps> oh, wow. We thought the store was fully stocked. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, so this is all the yarn. Oh my goodness. So when you guys go to New York Sheep and Wool, will you just come in here and grab it? Or what? We how do you... a U-Haul truck, mm -hmm. and they back it up to the loading dock, and then we fill it with all the yarn and all the display and drive it on up. And then whatever you don't sell, you just bring, bring it back, back to it the up. shelf. Yep, and bring it back. So here's the other oh my gosh. red room I was saying. So <gasps> oh, look at room. that. Yep. So where, I mean, to transport this thing. So this is fully assembled so that we can be sure that everything's working exactly the way it needs to. Yeah. They will disassemble it and put it in boxes and we will ship it to the person and then they will put it back together. Oh my goodness. Their hands. That is yeah. commitment. Whoa, yeah. look at this rainbow <laughs> land. <laughs> so this is where they put together the warps for our little easy weaver loom you can see one up okay there on the yeah yeah so so you guys make those as well we do yeah so weaving for everybody knitting for everybody we hope so how many people work here i think there are 37 full-time employees at Harrisville. It, isn't that amazing it that is, is so beautiful really wonderful so here's all the yeah all the little so this is yarn actually that we we spin the yarn here but um anything that doesn't end up in our first quality yarn gets kind of reprocessed and re-dyed and we use it to make these singles for oh, our piglin so kits. good and then we have a machine that makes these little tubes i love that there is no way it seems like there's very little waste there is very little waste you will not find like much scraps of anything and i yeah. never see any yarn go in the garbage ever yeah we really work hard to be sure everything gets used so these i love are it the, this is this is what we call the easy weaver. So I wonder if rainbow warp. my little one would like that because she was loving that. Yeah, it's fun. You know, the floor looms are the floor looms are so fast. Mm. The kids do love that, but this is also a really wonderful way for them to get started and mm -hmm. understand the process of weaving. Cool. And look at this view. I yeah. mean, working, you cannot. In this building is a pretty wonderful thing. And so cool. Building. Love it. So yeah. we're here on a Friday and no one's around. So yeah. no, no one works on Friday or seven to three. So this, oh, so yeah, missed so it. this part of the business is seven to three. Mm -hmm. The folks in the office down here in the, in this, um, granite mill are still working. They'll be there till five. Mm -hmm. We're there till five. And then the folks in the spinning mill do four, 10 hour days. Awesome. So they work six in the morning till four in the afternoon making yarn. That is not a bad gig. It works out pretty well. Okay, I love that. Okay, where do we go next? So next, this is the loom shop, the bench where he actually builds all the looms. Oh my goodness. And then... The craftsmanship. It's pretty wonderful. And what percentage would you say of your 37 employees live in Harrisville? It's getting dark, it's okay. Yeah. We know you're still here. That. It's all right. <laughs> I'm trying to think how many live in Harrisville. I mean, I would say probably at least 15 or 20 of them. Yeah, do. amazing. Yeah. And Historic Harrisville, or H Historic Harrisville also does really encourage and tries to help people who want to live in, in yeah. town if they can, because there are houses and rentals. So, yeah. So <gasps> is this nightshades? No. This no, isn't nightshades. This is a. That is. <gasps> Look at that. I have no idea. Oh, it's too blue to be nightshades. Something beautiful. It's so gorgeous. But not one of ours. And look at these. Are these just so this being washed? Is our extremely fancy way of washing yarn, which is that we use L.L. Bean dog beds. <gasps> no. In what? Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah. So. And you put the yarn inside? No. Nope. They put those in the bottom of the washing machine. Oh, so I that see. When it gets washed, it doesn't get agitated too yeah, much. Yeah. Wow. That is so fancy. It, it's very fancy. And so after it gets washed, it gets hung on these racks. And then it gets driven into one of these little rooms, and they have a curtain and a dehumidifier and a fan. So it gets its beauty treatment. Love it. 
Yeah. It is gorgeous, even in the dark. Yep. Look how beautiful it is. <laughs> Yarn in the dark. I love it. Yeah. The mixture of smells. I'm smelling cardboard, wood, and wet wool, yep. and it's making me so happy. I just want to make stuff. <laughs> okay, cool. So that's about, that's about it for this part. Love it. And um, if you want, we can walk over the bridge and okay. we can see the granite mill a little Sure, bit. would love to. Here's the boarding house, and Chick did mention there was a little child care center. Yep, there's a wonderful child care center on the first floor. My daughter went there, actually. Aww. And uh, my brother went there, also, like 25, 30 years ago. And then the third floor, though, is where we have the dorm for the students. Mm -hmm. And it was the Weaver's boarding house. Cool. So it's, on, it's, it's very kind of rustic, but it's also really a beautiful old space and people really enjoy it. It's yeah. got a full kitchen and so it ends up feeling like summer camp for grown-ups. Love it. Yeah. And then is this the, is this it? So the this mill? is the granite mill. So this is where the Harrisville Designs corporate, such as, <laughs> I don't think we're very corporate. Yeah. This is where the main office is. Yeah. Are, on this uh, second floor Look there. this. And then the third floor is where sometimes they do uh, various sorts of setups when we have to try out for trade shows and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then on in this building, there's a wonderful uh, motorcycle builder, and then there's an amazing, very accomplished photographer. There's an architecture firm in there, mm -hmm. and um, historic care school is on the first floor. Look at this! Yeah. Wow. Somebody else said, but it's kind of cool to see the Wow, that is yeah. so cool. Yeah. Look yeah. at that. I mean, how old must this be? Hundreds of years. Old. Yeah. Yeah. So this. Oh my yeah. gosh. And this mill actually, like, it was built. The guy who built it, like, built it. Yeah. And then died. And he never ran it, and the colony family bought it. So they were the first people. Hey, look at these yeah. floors. So amazing. I don't know what I'm hearing. So this is look at this door. This door right? <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look at that. Amazing. You know the old maps and things like that. And I've done a great job of this is like a little museum yes. section. Yep. Oh, look at the community band drums. Stop. Yeah. This is so rare. So cool. And he was saying that they haven't replaced the machinery, so does it still look like this? I mean, have yep. you. I mean, it's. Yeah. He said some of it was like 1920s. Yes, it's the same. Yep. Look at so that. that's a loom, so we don't have the Yeah, looms. this is a loom. Yeah. But I love this. This is the timetable for when it was Cheshire Mills. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. So hours of labor required of women and minors. Wow. <laughs> wow, so that's... This is, um, oh, there it is. This building in 1875. <gasps> and then in 1880. Oh my God. Look at the people in their outfits and mm -hmm. wow, it, it, it looks unchanged. It's amazing how well preserved it is. So that was Nationwide Grocery. So the Harris cool. Storehouse. So that's actually the building directly across the street from the, the studio yeah. and the store. And then this is the jungle store. That we were looking at. Pat, Colin grew up, her family owned the general store. Chick's wife, Pat, so yeah. That's amazing. There it is. Yeah, so this is what, this is the before and after. That was before it was restored. And then you can see all the windows are boarded up. Mm -hmm. And the, let's look at the roof of the board. Yeah, you can see they just did amazing work. Wow. To bring it back. My grandmother worked there in the 30s. And that was originally oh how she came to 
New Hampshire. So what's it like to live here and work here for you, knowing you have all this family history? Because, I mean, I understand that's how towns are built, right? That family stays, marry other people from the town, have kids. Like, that's how a town is built. Harris, the Harrises, right? Yep. But so how does it feel to still be here? I mean, talk about that, because not everyone gets that. Well, I mean, I grew up in the next town over, which is called Peterborough, but we'd always come through Harrisville because my grandmother lived in Nelson. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I, you know, I had tons of cousins growing up and it felt very much like I, a place I wanted to be. Mm. You know, I never really had the feeling some people do of like, can't wait to get out of here. Right. And then I did go to college in the city and I thought it was going to be exciting and I was going to love it. And I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. And I, I really, I love New England. I love New Hampshire in particular. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I love knowing people. I love feeling very connected. And so working in a place like Harrisville and at a company like Harrisville Designs, I feel like it's, it's bigger than just making money. And it's bigger than just making yarn. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, know, you can get yarn from almost anywhere, mm -hmm. but it's, pretty rare to feel like that the yarn is made by people in a place that really has all that tradition. So yeah. It feels really special and I love feeling like connected. I feel that too. Hey, bye. <laughs>